Tsunami Studios. Batman, Soul of the Dragon. This is awesome. I love it. This is the latest animated movie from DC, and they've been cr they've just been crushing it lately. Like, the Man of Tomorrow Superman movie was great. You know, their Apocalypse War was fun. We got a lot of cool stuff down the pipeline I'm excited for, but this one really stood true to being something unique and a visceral experience. So, I want to start off by saying it's not going to be for everyone, just because I know there's going to be some people that go into this with a certain expectation of what a DC comic book's animated project should be. It's very stylized, very pulpy. It does certain things with characters that could be cliche or troped in a certain era, and maybe they don't hold up perfectly to a modern audience, or sometimes it comes across as a little too obviously of a time. But I think for what it's going for, it does a really good job of doing that. I, I'll, we'll get into it a little bit with the characters, but it really holds up. I think there's something really cool about this story. The narrative is fantastic. It's engaging. The animation is great. The characters are fantastic. Everything about this worked really well. I think it's worth your time. I really do. I, I recommend picking it up and watching it. I think it's really cool. When I say it's of a certain time, this movie takes place in the 70s, and we're following the stories of a 70s Batman and 70s style for certain characters that we know. So because it's the 70s, there are certain things about it that feel of the 70s. First off, it's very kung fu, which is awesome. The kung fu in this is so cool, and it makes for such a great like story and narrative, and the way it plays off itself is really awesome. But it's also kind of that, like, uh, there's a character in here that's very of that, like, black exploitation era of stuff, where it's, you know, like, you're Dolomite, which it works. I think it works. There might be some people who watch and be like, ah, this is annoying, but that's the time. That's the character they were trying to make, and it worked really well. So if you can get past those, I think you're in for a treat. Now, not everybody can, and I understand that completely, but those of you who see like, oh, they're doing an homage to 70s filmmaking, right down to the way the story progresses, the character beats, the transitions are very 70s, very kung fu, and the score, oh my god, the score is incredible. Just those classic black exploitation feeling like riffs of the guitar or the stings and the transitions for each song. It's so of the 70s and it feels of that era of like the Kung Fu and those types of films. It's so good. It is so fun. The character designs are incredible. I love them a lot. I think there's something really unique about the description for each character and the way they play off each other. This isn't a Batman movie. Let's get that out of the way. This isn't a Batman movie. If you want my opinion, having the character of Batman in here hindered the story a little bit. I still absolutely loved it. I think you could do it with Batman and it worked just fine. But if you eliminated Batman from the narrative and just made it a Bruce Wayne story, that works really cool too. I think that's an even more interesting angle to play and not having him be Batman. I understand why Batman's in here. We got to sell this movie somehow, but it's so cool. Bruce Wayne in this, it's a really likable Bruce Wayne. You, you feel for him, you understand him. He's not an aloof idiot. I kind of respect this guy feels like a 70s Batman. He's kind of funny. He's charming. He knows the kind of person he is. He knows the world around him. He's still like on the up and coming side of being his Batman, but it's still really cool. And his relationship with the characters in this movie work really well. The lead of this story is Richard Dragon. Now, I think he's a very likable lead. He's very charismatic, very charming, very Bruce Lee, which I'm like, yeah, if you're going to go for that Kung Fu feel, you go for it. You make him look like Bruce Lee. You give him the stances like Bruce Lee. You have some shirtless fights like Bruce Lee. You go fucking all in on that. You better, because if you're doing the homage to Bruce Lee, you commit to that shit. You go for it. And they did. Richard Dragon's very likable, his personality is so charming and unique, and the way he interacts with Bruce in particular I think is really cool because they're kind of like the top students in this idea. There's a really interesting idea of the backstory here about like what Nanda Parbat's supposed to be, but it's like represented as like this ancient place that feels different than other interpretations. It's a very 70s interpretation of Nanda Parbat. It's small, it's quaint, it's a place where you train and like learn to be a better version of yourself instead of actually joining a cult, which I think is really cool. And by the way, before we get to the other characters, the idea of a cult in this movie, like the way they like, yeah, we got a cult and like the weird angle with like the gods and shit, it's awesome. 
the villains are so cool in this story. Like, you're just like, yeah, I understand how this Batman would fight this character here. It makes sense. And it is so cool. I love the idea of the villains and like how it relates to the actual story. All of that worked really well. Lady Shiva. Holy shit. This is such a good interpretation of that character, man. She was so insanely fun to watch. She just had the right personality, the right portrayal, everything she did. There was like an effortless energy to it that was so cool to see. Her character was just fascinating and fun. You believed her as a character who would be a part of this world while still being like the villainous side of her nature. And I thought that was really fun. The character of Bronze Tiger was the same. Now, there's kind of where they went for like that black exploitation feel. But the entire time, like, this is such a good interpretation of that character. I believe it. I don't think it's anything bad about it. Give me more of that, and I think we will all be happy. It was that cool of a performance that he did in the role. It was just so fun. And the way all four of those characters come together and work together in a unique way, where sure, maybe they have their differences, but that's what family is. They're technically, they're kind of a family in sense of what the story's trying to set up. And it's really fun. Oh my God, the action is great. It's so well animated. The characters are bouncing around, doing great kung fu, looking fantastic while they're doing it. All to that beautiful, beautiful score. You're just blown away by everything they're doing. Some great car chases, some just everything about it looked so good. I want more stuff like this. The entire time I was watching this, I'm like, I want this exact feel for a Power Man and Iron Fist cartoon. That would be so cool. I want this for a Daughters of the Dragon cartoon. I want another animated Batman movie in this style, you know, where it's got this feel to it. I'd follow these characters again. They're that cool and that engaging. It's really unique. It's a 70s movie. It's a kung fu movie. It's a black exploitation movie, but it also feels very much like a comic book movie, which I'm like, yes, this is what people want. We want more of this, this fun energy, this cool idea where we're focusing on not the most popular characters in the DC Comics universe, but the ones that could tell a good story in there. There's something really cool about that, and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I think the introduction of Batman hinders the film a little bit. We had to sell it somehow, but I think if you just did Bruce Wayne instead of Batman, there's something really cool in there too, and maybe this leads him to becoming Batman. I'm not going to tell you how to write a movie, but that's really cool. I think that would have been a fun way to see. And James Hong... James Hong is in it, legendary voice actor, character actor, the best man in the world, probably. James Hong is in this, and you're like, yeah, give me more of this. I want more of this. It looks nothing like Superman, Man of Tomorrow. It doesn't have even a, it doesn't feel like that at all. It's its own unique individual piece that I'm really happy we got made in this era because there's never going to be anything like it again, I'd imagine. Please watch this. Please understand what it's trying to be and enjoy that. It's unique. It's visceral. It's engaging. It's fun. It's lighthearted. Its villains are campy and weird. It's very mature, very adult, but at the same time, you're like, there's some art behind this. There's some real, genuine emotion put behind this where it doesn't feel like they're just ripping off a comic book, you know? This is like, we have a story to tell with characters we want to talk about. We're going to do something that's an homage while still being original and creative and everything about it works effortlessly. This Bruce Wayne voice actor is incredible. I really like it. I, I, I want more of this. Give me more of these, please. Please do more period pieces in this style. I will watch them all. Absolutely genius. Absolutely genius. I, I cannot recommend this movie enough because it is worth your damn time and it is worth your money. It's going to make you smile. And if it doesn't, just enjoy it for what it is. There's something cool about an homage in this style that makes me very happy. So, Batman, Soul of the Dragon, I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.